thanks a lot for the invitation. <clears throat> it's great to um, give you a short talk about uh, what we uh, have been working on the last uh, five, six, seven years. It's about Transcribus, a platform for the transcription, recognition, and searching of historical documents. I'm working here at the University of Innsbruck. Um, actually, I studied German language and literature a um, long time ago. And uh, about a bit more than 20 years ago, uh, yeah, um, I somehow discovered digital libraries, text recognition, digitization, and all that uh, stuff. And uh, I'm, yeah, and since that time, I'm following that, that way. Yeah, can you read this? This is a document from the Netherlands, from the National, uh, National Archives of the Netherlands. I think something from the 17th century, um, I think notary uh, files, and a transcribus model was trained for that kind of writing. And you see the results uh, below. Um, the, as you can see, it uh, reads rather well. Um, even the at sign, which was there already some hundred years ago. And the main mistakes in that case are um, uh, capital letters. Uh, you see the H or the P, um, but with historical documents, of course, um, capital letter writing is always a question of somehow interpretation. So these results are very good, not for all documents, of course. Um, you can expect such uh, good results. I've taken a bit uh, nicer ones, but um, uh, yes, that's that's what 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 happens another example from 1610 from germany current writing so actually in central europe the kind of writing changed very much from current to latin writing in the 20th century and even history students or people who are not familiar with that kind of writing will have real troubles to understand what is written here or to decipher and again, you can see that uh, only a few um, mistakes were made by the engine. Um, the, um, this is based on so-called models. So um, this is the result of a training, of a supervised training. And uh, the first example you have seen is based on the iceberg model. Already mentioned that it comes from the National Archives of the Netherlands. They processed about 3 million double pages within the project. We finished this project uh, two weeks ago. It ran in 2019 and 20. And uh, the basis was a, trans, uh, a, a ground truth or training data of about 4,000 um, pages carefully transcribed. It's a public model in Transcribus and anyone can use it who downloads the, the software, but also the data are available on uh, Synodo. It's a public repository run by the EU Commission or financed by the EU Commission. And the other one is the Spruchakten model coming from the University of Greifswald, uh, court records, and that's still work in progress. Um, I think they wanted to publish it um, in autumn, but uh, I guess it will become spring or summer, but that will be a very good model for German current of that kind of writing. So the main, uh, one, of, one of the main messages I have that these models were created by the users, not by us. And uh, the users are those who know best their documents. And uh, for us, it would be, I mean, it, we, we wouldn't be able to do the job ourselves. So we provide the tool and the users are training the neural networks, which create the models or have the models as a result. As a rule of thumb, after training many, many thousands of models, I, I, I would like to share some, it's not a scientific um, um, results I can share, but, but, but some, some good rule of thumb, I would say, some experiences. So usually you can work with 300 PPI scans, uh, even less. Um, 150, 200 PPIs are okay. You can expect printed text, also from uh, microfilm, 
So e.g. newspaper scans can be done with a below 1% character array, depending again, of course, on the quality of the scans. Often you get uh, black and white uh, uh, microfilm scans than it might be worse. If you have a single hand, um, you might expect a character error rate of 2 to 4%, and you will start to get good models with about 10,000 words. Uh, if you have several hands, but you all of them are somehow um, seen by the models or seen by the neural networks during training, um, you can expect 4 to 6% character error rate with several 10,000 words of training data. And if you have many hands, but somehow from the same period and region, so like the, the two models you saw at the beginning, you can expect something between six and eight uh, percent character error rate with hundred thousands of words. Um, if you double the number of training data, you can usually see a decrease of the error rate of 20 to 25 percent. So at the beginning, you see strong progress if you have 100 pages, 200 pages, 400 pages, uh, you always get a nice uh, improvement. But once you have uh, already 2,000 pages of transcription uh, and you have maybe six, seven, eight percent character error rate to decrease it with one or two percent will, will mean that you have to double the training data. Of course, researchers are working on that to um, that um, it's not necessary to have that many training data, but um, I would say for the next years, it is, yeah, I do not expect uh, too much uh, progress on that. So um, if the models have not seen the hands, or if it is concept writing, uh, then the results are worse. Uh, so the, the data from above are for rather clear writing, I would say. It can be individual writing, of course, but, but it should be, um, um, you shouldn't have too much problems to decipher as a human being. Yeah, um, so the training of the neural networks is very simple. Uh, so it's just transcribing the text line by line to make a match between the line of the image and the text line. And then the models are learning to make the connection between the image, the, the patterns of the image and the pattern of the text are of course somehow related. And this relationship is exactly what is learned during the uh, um, learning process by the so-called artificial uh, intelligence. So that's the interface of uh, Transcribus and you can see we are working with baseline. So here is a line marked and you see below uh, the writing, Raling, Krama, Maria. And, um, and that's exactly what uh, is then uh, fed to the neural network and they will learn to make the connection and to learn the, 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 uh, to learn to decipher this writing. They, you will get the kind of learning curve uh, so you will see the, the neural networks learn in iterations. So in that case, it's about 200 iterations. And at the beginning, they learn very fast. After 10 iterations, you can see that the character error rate drops to something like 10%. And then it goes down and uh, rather slow, but goes down on the validation set to about 5% and on the training set to about 2.8%. So for that, model. This is exactly the model which, which was trained on that kind of writing. And you can see we used here 181,000 words. So who are our users? Uh, on the one hand, of course, scholars. Um, I took one out of many. Uh, Achim Rabus from Germany. He's uh, working with Slavic. He's a professor for Slavic languages and working with uh, Slavic medieval stuff, uh, trained the model on that kind of church, Slavonic, old church Slavonic, and got uh, very good results. That looks uh, rather nice. Um, nearly it's handwritten, but nearly uh, like printed. Of course, the, the challenge here are the accents. Then archives. Um, one of our 
partners from the very beginning. Uh, we, we started the project uh, in, a, in an EU project or the platform in an EU project was the National uh, Archive of Finland. And um, they, uh, for them, we did a project also, um, they finished that project uh, a few weeks ago and it will go online uh, next week, I think. Um, so there are again, court records will be made available for searching because the output of the neural networks can also be used to improve searching. So you get more than just the first best transcription, you also get um, the chance to create uh, um, more options and to create a richer index. And that can be used for searching. That's a look to the search interface. And, and here you get um, the detailed view from the search results. On the left hand, the image, on the right hand, the transcription. Again, this is a model with something between six, seven, eight percent character error rate. Uh, as you can see, it's professional writing and therefore results are, are satisfying and people can read rather quickly on the, in the electronic text. Um, and of course, uh, the technology can be used for um, uh, crowdsourcing projects and family historians uh, who engage as, as volunteers here. The, um, um, the, uh, the City Archive of Amsterdam is uh, very active and they run a, a platform which is called Fele Handen, so many hands, together with the private company, Picture, and there they they started the project Cloud Lead Computer Lesen, which means the crowd teaches the computer to read. And this was a great success. So they started with a few thousand pages. And, pages. and, and now, now. we already 42,000 pages are uploaded and 28,000 pages already transcribed with the help of the computer. And uh, around Transcribus, uh, a rather large community um, um, was created or built up. And uh, here's from, um, from the Transcribus User Conference in 2018. Uh, so the, the, the software itself is, uh, can, is free, can be used. Uh, you can see that the number of registered users is growing constantly. We have now more than 43,000 user, users registered in the platform and about 200, 300 and even more uh, people are working daily in Transcribus. About 7,300 models were already trained by the, by the users and the training data for that are likely the, the largest collection of historical handwriting worldwide used for um, training neural networks. Um, yeah, after the end of the project, the end of the project we will, um, deal with the with the sustainability of the platform. And as you can imagine with thousands of users and uh, tons of uh, images uploaded to the uh, platform, um, a kind of um, uh, legal entity was necessary. And we decided uh, to go for a cooperative. So to become uh, one of the first European cooperative societies, uh, it's called REED. Co-op, and um, the main idea is to collaborate between different kind of users to share the ownership. Uh, also, members become customers. Customers can become members. Uh, one of the main features of a co-op is that there is no shareholder value, but uh, everything goes back to the to the to the Transcribus platform and to the stakeholders. So we started a few weeks ago with the monetization of the Transcribus platform. I have to say that larger projects already from 2019 onwards were paid projects yeah. and could have not, there wouldn't have been any chance to have been any chance platform without uh, these paid services. And um, yeah, so it's, it's remaining free of uh, credits as a credit system. But uh, if, um, if, if there's a larger project, um, uh, some uh, paid, uh, so, so we charge uh, some fees. Currently about five uh, full-time equivalents are working in the co-op and uh, we hope to, to go on. Yeah, and I have to say already 70 members uh, joined us 
and uh, also Stanford University Library. And I've seen uh, Neil Fitzgerald from uh, British Library. They also joined the co-op. And I have to say that I'm, I'm very much convinced that this uh, cooperative has um, a real, um, um, offers really great chances and options uh, to the members um, because it allows to, um, yeah, to, to, to work on the market, to uh, make business, uh, but also to collaborate. Thank you. Gunter, thank you so much. One of the things we've talked about, and you heard it at the beginning of this, was that libraries, archives, and museums have a lot of original source data. We've talked about things like competitions, maybe similar to what the British Library, uh, I think, has run it, that Tom spoke to. Um, is there a way that as a community we might effectively pool our data to uh, create training data and better models that could then be shared across at least the library archives and museum sector? It's a difficult uh, uh, situation actually. Um, all what I can say is that the experts, uh, that, the, that many of the documents we are dealing with are so special that you really need the, uh, the people from the faculties uh, who have their research projects and have a real interest in, in making these documents uh, readable. And uh, so to collaborate with them and to give them the, the tool, that's, that's our most important strategy. And then of course they, they can decide what to do with the data. It's all about, it's, it's all, all their data and all their knowledge. So that's up to them, of course.